I started my first Etsy shop 14 years ago. When I was doing the math for this video, I just could not believe it that it's been that long. But over those 14 years, I have learned so much with the Etsy platform. I've tried selling so many different products on Etsy. And in this video, I wanted to kind of tell you my journey with some of those products, some things that worked for me and things that didn't work for me and how I finally found success and was able to make Etsy my full-time job um, within the past few years. So back in 2010, I was painting acrylic paintings. This was just something that I liked to do for fun. And then some of my family and friends wanted to purchase those paintings for me. Um, somehow I ended up having a whole gallery show in Philadelphia and a lot of my paintings were being sold in stores across Philadelphia, which is pretty cool to think looking back on um, that time period. And I remember somebody came to me and they said, it was at that gallery in Philadelphia where I was showing my artwork and somebody said, do you have an online store? And I didn't. And they said, you can easily sell your paintings on Etsy and that way you don't need you know, local people to come to you, your paintings could be you know, worldwide if you wanted them to be. Your paintings could be shown to the world if you're on an online platform like Etsy. So that sounded really exciting and really intriguing. So I looked into it, I started an Etsy shop, I took photos of my paintings, I put them in Etsy. And at the time I had no idea um, that these platforms had algorithms. I didn't even know what the word algorithm meant. <laughs> I didn't know anything about SEO. Basically I was just putting these paintings up and title, I was giving them odd titles like, you know, like flamingo paradise, <laughs> something that nobody would ever type into the search to find. I just had no idea how to sell online at that point. So basically most of the sales that I made were from family or friends that I sent the link to. I do however remember there was one painting, it was like $80 and somebody from California purchased it. And that was like an aha moment for me where I was like, wow, somebody from across the United States bought this painting from me. I thought that was so cool. And that kind of started to show me the power of having an online business, how it doesn't have to be people locally finding your products, anyone can find your products. But then came time to ship the painting and it was a huge painting and the packaging um, and the shipping price put me out of pocket for that painting. But at the same time, I was really excited and saw, you know, it was like the first time I saw an opportunity in this and I was like, okay, I just have to figure out a way that I can make a profit, but this might actually work. So fast forward some time and that ended up being the only painting I sold to a stranger. So I kind of let go of the idea of selling my art on Etsy. I didn't know, you know, if I mastered the SEO, I could have probably sold more paintings, but I didn't know that at that time. So I just let go of that idea. And then we fast forward to years later, um, I was getting married and the theme of my wedding was crystals and succulents. And I wanted to make a special jewelry box for my wedding ring. So some of my friends were also obsessed with crystals. So for their wedding days, I also made them one of these. And then it got me thinking, I really enjoyed making them. It was really fun. And I was like, there's gotta be other people that would be interested in having these for their wedding days. So I got onto Etsy and I searched like geode jewelry boxes and I saw that people were selling them for like $100, like $50, $100, $150. I'm like, what? Because this probably took me, or this probably cost me like 15 or $20 to me. So I was like, wow, that's a really great profit margin and they're not that hard to make and it was fun for me. So then I went online, I found a supplier for these and I purchased some. And the difficult thing about it was not all of them were as perfect as mine. Um, you know, you can't always get a perfect rock. Some of the holes weren't big enough for rings. I had to make sure it was a big enough size. There was a lot of issues going into finding in inventory for these, but I found, sifted through and found some that worked, made a couple really nice ones and listed them on a new shop in Etsy. And sure enough, they started to sell. Now this is where 
the whole like finding an in-demand niche where there's a higher search volume but a lower competition. There weren't many people making these on Etsy, but there were people searching for them. So I got in at a perfect time for these. Now I have to look, now there might be many, many people selling these online, um, but at the time it was low competition and high search volume. So I was making sales on these and I was making a really great profit margin, like sometimes $80 profit on this. Now, but the thing that went into it was I had to find really good, um, geodes that would fit rings. I had to make sure the glue was strong enough um, for the door hinge to go on. I had to take the time to make it. Oh, it was so hard to like, it, it's very difficult to make these, but it was fun. It was fun, but it was difficult to make them. Then I had to package them up really nicely because you know, so either people were buying them for proposals um, or people were buying them for their wedding days. So I wanted to package them really nice. And that was all fun too, but all of this took time and it took money. Then I would have to take it to the post office and ship it out. I'm not complaining here. This was all part of the process and I was making some decent money from it, but I'm just sh telling you all the things that went into it. Um, so basically that was my next little side hustle on Etsy. I wanted to add more to that shop because I saw that these were selling. I was like, what other products can I sell? And I was like, well, these are jewelry boxes. So maybe I'll try selling jewelry as well. So I, and I wanted it to be like crystal theme. So I bought all of these beautiful crystal beads and I started making beaded bracelets. And I'm laughing because I'm just thinking back to how it was and like I would get an order for a beaded bracelet and I remember just like sitting there so tired after work like just doing it and it was relaxing you know but I had got an order and that's fun and all but I'm making it and then I remember dropping one of them beads went everywhere and I just wanted to cry <laughs> um, so basically like handmade you know I started with handmade products on Etsy and I was passionate about all three of those products and it was fun. I'm a crafty person at heart and it was really fun to be able to make something and have somebody like love and appreciate it and actually wanna purchase it from you. That whole piece of it is so rewarding. Like being a handmade Etsy seller, it's more about like the process and the journey and the crafting part of it and like making your customers happy with the packaging and all that. Like I really did love that aspect of it, but it took a lot of my time. And now with like children, like forget about it. Like I don't have time to be making my any products. <laughs> um, and that's kind of what happened. Like I was a full-time teacher and then I had a baby and I just didn't have time to keep up with all of this. So I kind of put it all on the back burner. And then fast forward to um, like 2018, I was very burnt out from my teaching position. And I, like I said, I had a baby at the time. Um, and I just, it wasn't in my heart to be a teacher any longer. So I was like, there's gotta be a way that I can make enough money online or do something to be able to quit my teaching position. And side note, if you don't know my whole story yet, um, my husband and I really wanted to move our family to Greece. We've been coming to Greece every summer for the past like 11 years now. And it was always our dream to just be able to stay, but how could we do that with our jobs back home, you know? So at this time of burnout, my husband also really wanted to move to Greece. So we were like, all right, there's gotta be a way, you know, like people do it, people figure it out. So it got the wheels turning and um, I had always wanted to write a children's book. So, and this video is all over the place. I promise it's all gonna come together at the end. Um, but I had always wanted to write a children's book. So I was like, let me look into writing a children's book. So I figured out how to do that and I published it on Amazon KDP and which is another online business that if you guys are interested in, I can make another video uh, another time to get into all that. But um, so I posted my book on Amazon KDP and as I was researching how to advertise my book, because again, only my family and friends bought that book because I didn't understand that there's a whole search 
engine optimization and algorithm with these platforms. I had no business background, so I was just putting products up and like hoping that someone would find it, you know? And with my book, no one did um, unless they had the link. So I was not very successful with that. So I jumped onto YouTube and was trying to figure out how I could advertise my book more. And that's when I stumbled across videos about people making money on Etsy, which I had, you know, which I was familiar with. But I saw people making big money on Etsy to where they could quit their jobs. To me, before this moment, I had, I had always thought I can make, you know, a little side income from Etsy. And that's nice. You know, I, we could put it towards our yearly vacations or I can like get my nails done with that money. Like I thought it was just like little side money, but I started seeing videos of people making thousands and thousands of dollars a month. And I just, that blew my mind. I could not believe it. And it really excited me. So I immediately was like, I'm starting a t-shirt business. <laughs> so I, um, I went onto Amazon because at the time this was like the start of the pandemic. I couldn't go out and shop. So I went onto Amazon and I purchased a Cricut machine and t-shirts and all the materials that I would need to make the t-shirts. And I spent hundreds of dollars that I really didn't have to be spending at the time. But I was like, I'm going to make all that money back and more. I just felt really optimistic about it. So I purchased everything and then I jumped right back to YouTube and that's where I found out, like literally within 20 minutes of that purchase that I found out about print on demand. And that's the next section of this video. So basically what print on demand is, is you create a design on your laptop or your iPad or even your phone. And if you're not an artist, that's okay. You can actually purchase designs as well. And you put that design onto a t-shirt mock-up or a product mock-up. So if we're talking about t-shirts, it's a picture of a blank t-shirt and you pull that design digitally onto that blank t-shirt and you list that onto Etsy. And when someone purchases that t-shirt, it looks like a real t-shirt on there. When someone purchases it, it's synced up to a printing company such as Printify. Printify is who I use to print all of my print on demand products over the years. Um, it's synced right up to Printify. They print the design onto the product and then they package it and ship it directly to my customer. I was like, what? So I ran back to my Amazon cart and I canceled that order. And then from that moment on, I literally jumped on Etsy, created a shop and hit the ground running with print on demand. My goal was to have one year left of teaching to be able to quit my teaching position and potentially move to Greece with my family. So I started that in May of 2020. And by May of 2021, when we were supposed to sign our teaching contracts for the next year, I didn't sign it. Because that day, I looked at my stats on Etsy and I matched my teaching salary. So I was able, I felt confident enough to go in there and not have to go back the following year because I knew with the time, I, I had already felt comfortable financially because I matched my teaching salary. And then I knew by quitting teaching, I would have so much more time to work on my shop and scale it even more. So I felt very comfortable. Of course, I was so scared. And we can get into this in another video if you guys have questions about how it feels or what you do when you quit your job because, oh my gosh, I can feel this, the feeling in my stomach. It's a very scary feeling to essentially like quit your career that you went to school for and you spent time with and it's that safety net of that consistent income um, to then jump to your own business. That's all, it feels like a lot of pressure, but actually the weight that was lifted when I took my own you know, business into my hands and no longer had to go to a teaching position and spend all of my time working for somebody else was so freeing. And like I said, we can get into that in another video. But anyway, so one year I was able to quit my teaching position. Now, is that possible for everyone? No, I put in so many hours, so many hours. I sacrificed events and times and friends to get 
that, to find that success that quickly. I put in a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's not going to happen for everyone, but it is very possible. Um, if you learn the right strategies and you put the time in and you don't give up. So, and then that was 2021 where I quit my teaching position. And then the following year, 2022, I was able to fully move to Greece with my family. So this print on demand model has changed my life so fast over these past 14 years. When I look back to starting my first Etsy shop and I was only making a few sales to now in 2024, I'm able to live financially free. It's just something so cool and magical about that. I mean, like think about like back in the day and even now people who have brick and mortar shops and they are paying a monthly rent to be in these shops and they are relying on people to locally just walk into their store and they have a bunch of inventory that may or may not sell. And then you look at print on demand where you're worldwide on Etsy and you don't even have to touch a physical product or put out money until someone purchases it. Like that is just, that, there's no words. There's no words. <laughs> and because there's no inventory and I don't have any machines to deal with or anything like that, I was able to freely move to another country with my family. If I was making all of my products, I probably would have been like stuck making them in the US or I would have had to find a way to bring all of my inventory and machinery and whatever I needed to complete orders to Greece with me. So for me, print on demand has just been so freeing for my life. And the other Another cool thing about it is like I've dabbled into other types of products. So I initially became successful with t-shirts and sweatshirts, but Printify has so many other products that you can use. Like they have tumblers, they have mugs, tote bags, blankets, like beanbag chair covers, pet products, baby products, so many products that you can dabble into and scale your shops even more or open up other shops and have like a home goods shop. There are so many opportunities when you're using Printify to scale your Etsy shops. If you're just hearing about print on demand for the first time in this video, this might sound very exciting, but it also might sound overwhelming and you might be like, she's not answering any, of, any questions that I have. Um, I have plenty of other videos on my channel explaining the print on demand process, but what would really help you is my free print on demand to freedom course in the description below. It's free and it'll explain it more in detail. It will take you step by step through the process of setting up an Etsy shop synced with Printify. And also I do a monthly mailbox Monday. So if you have any questions about print on demand, just put them in the comment section below for a chance to have your question answered in my next mailbox Monday. I know that this video was more of like story based and more of like rambling thoughts, um, but I just thought that it would, you know, maybe help some people see the difference between being a handmade seller and a print on demand seller and how huge the opportunity is to be a print on demand seller on Etsy, how freeing it is. I'm so thankful for companies like Printify. They literally changed my life like immensely. And I still can't believe that I have these businesses on Etsy that are making so much money and I've never touched a physical product. So if print on demand excites you, if you're someone who's dabbling in print on demand already, successful with print on demand, or you're hearing about it for the first time and you're excited about it, put in the comment section below freedom. Um, and I just wish all the freedom for all of us. It is very, very possible. And I hope that my story inspires you to see my journey of trying to figure it out and how possible it really can be. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can learn more about print on demand. I hope that this video helped you some way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.